Being able to share in a few words, in a few minutes, the essential findings of your research project is one of the skills that doctors and clinical scientists should master. As a matter of fact, being able to share the essentials of any project in a few minutes is useful to any professional. Listen to and watch Dr. Chris Cook, a winner of the PCR's Got Talent competition, explain why and how he performed his study, what were the results and why they do matter. Hello and welcome to my three minute presentation which addresses the impact of pressure wire drift on stenosis classification. The first question we must always ask is why this study? Coronary physiology techniques allow us to identify ischemia producing coronary lesions. This allows us to perform ischemia guided revascularization which we know improves patient outcomes. However, a common phenomenon is that of pressure wire drift, which can affect the accuracy of our measurements. But we know very little about drift, and specifically the effect of pressure wire drift on stenosis misclassification. So how did we construct a study to answer this scientific question? We looked at our multi-center registry of pressure wire measurements, which were all performed without any detectable levels of drift. We then exported that data in form of the raw pressure traces into a custom-made MATLAB computer program. In that program, we were able to model drift across the clinically acceptable range of minus two millimeters of mercury to plus two millimeters of mercury. We then recalculated FFR, IFR, and whole cycle PDPA indices and compared these drifted values to the undrifted values. So what did we show? We showed that in 452 stenoses, the key finding that small amounts of drift can lead to big changes in stenosis misclassification. And specifically, that with whole cycle PDPA, 33% or one third of stenoses change classification. With IFR, 25%, and with FFR, 21% change classification. So why are the results of this study important? They are important to us as physicians and also to our patients. The key message is that small amounts of pressure wire drift can lead to large changes in stenosis classification and that whole cycle PDPA was more vulnerable to this misclassification than either FFR or IFR. So finally, how will the results of this study change your practice? Well, it emphasizes that meticulous care must be made when making pressure wire assessment and that a check of drift is important for every single measurement. And if you have a borderline result with a significant amount of drift, then that measurement must be repeated. Thank you very much for listening.